Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today I'm going to go over the 10 best illustrated picture books according to the New York Times and New York Public Library from 2019. Now, if you are new to this list, I was new to this list last year and one of my subscribers and friends, Michael Clark, gently encouraged me to seek this list out, to read the books on this list and to perhaps make a video on it. And I did and I'm so glad that I did because there are some gorgeous, utterly gorgeous picture books uh, featured on this list. This list is a collaboration between the New York Times newspaper and the New York Public Library in order to feature 10 gorgeously illustrated children's picture books. What I love about this list is that it is very dynamic. It has artists from all over the world and the art that's featured is very um, wide reaching. It's very, it's very varied, <laughs> I, I suppose. And so if you you are a lover of picture books, if you are a lover of art, if you love books and reading like me, I would encourage you to subscribe and stick around. Now let's just get started. There are absolutely no ugly picture books on this list. All of the picture books are beautiful in their own way and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about them from my least favorite to my favorite <laughs> and I'm doing that and it's just because some of the art didn't align with what I personally like and also some of the stories um, I feel like I'm always looking for a good marriage between beautiful art and a lovely story or a lovely concept that works well and it has to be the marriage of those two things in order for the book to be at the top of my list and so the books that are at the bottom of the list they either had an art style that I didn't necessarily jive with though I could appreciate or the story story wasn't very strong. It's one of those two things. All right, number 10 is I Miss My Grandpa by Jin Jiaojing. So I Miss My Grandpa tells the story of a granddaughter talking with her grandmother about the grandfather that she has never met. And the way that her grandmother answers questions to her granddaughter is saying, your grandfather had hair like this family member. Your grandfather had the, sh the shape face of this family member. And the illustrations reflect uh, what the grandmother is saying. and. Essentially, the little girl is getting a sense of what her grandfather looked like through other members of her family. I would say this is at the bottom of the list because I had a difficult time connecting with the story, though I could appreciate its sweetness. And though I love the textures that was in Zhao Jing's art, overall the style wasn't aligned to my preferences. Coming in at number nine is A Million Dots by Sven Volker. This is a German-based illustrator and they take the concept of uh, one dot and one dot make two dots and then two dots and two dots make four dots and the concept of doubling a number um, on itself all the way up until you get to the millions. <laughs> And the dots on the page represent the, the number that they are featuring. The concept is really cool and showing kids that you can double a number and how quickly a number grows just by doubling itself um, was really awesome. But ultimately, again, my preferences of art didn't quite align with Sven Volker's uh, picture book. Okay, coming in at number eight is Christian Robinson's Another. Christian Robinson is a California, a US-based illustrator. And this story is taking the idea of like portals or multiverses and showing it through a wordless picture book. It was very sweet. It was very adorable and I love the idea of multiverses shown in a picture book, but there wasn't a strong narrative to follow. And I really love beautiful narratives to kind of figure out, to chuckle at or to enjoy. And ultimately this was more just like seeking out different dimensions through portals, which was fascinating, but again, lacked a sense of narrative arc. Coming in at number seven, we have Small in the City by Sydney Smith, who is a Canadian-based illustrator. And this tells the story of a little person, a little boy, I believe, um, talking about what it's like to feel very small in a large city like New York or um, Chicago. It could have been really any big city. What I loved about this is that 
the child is talking to someone very specific and it isn't until the end of the story that you realize that the child is talking to his cat and that he is looking for his cat in the big city and being able to empathize with being lost in somewhere much larger than yourself and sometimes kind of scary. I loved the narration and the narrative arc of this story, but I actually didn't love the illustration style. So um, yeah, and I'm always looking for the blend. I'm always looking for a blend of both in order for it to make the top of my list. Coming in at number six, we have The Lost Cousins by B.B. Cronin. B.B. Cronin is a Dublin, Ireland based illustrator with this immaculate, lovely, incredible neon style. <laughs> if you can't tell, I love, I just love this uh, style, the colors that Cronin chooses. Um, I love the character design and I just am enamored with the whole color palette. Um, I think as far as color palettes go, this is at the very, very, very top of my list. And this picture book, what it's all about is that Cronin gives you little things to look for in the, these very detailed and very immaculate illustrations. Um, and so as I was reading this with my children, we were actually looking for the little characters that you're trying to spot. And it's harder than you think. So I loved that it was a find and seek kind of book um, where you're you know, really digging into the details of the page in order to find what you're looking for. But again, as I am kind of feeling like a broken record, it didn't have a strong narrative to follow. It wasn't doing anything particularly new or interesting, even though I am totally enamored with Cronin's illustration style. Okay, we are at the top five. So this is probably my favorite in terms of illustrations. I was absolutely enamored with the style. And that is Child of Glass by Beatrice Almagna. Beatrice is a an Italian-based artist and I loved her choice of color. I loved the end papers. I loved the distortion and this sort of layered effect that she was able to get. There are transparent papers in the story and it very much suits the story because it is about a child who is totally transparent. She's made of glass and it's about being different in the world and coming to terms with your differences. I just loved, if you cannot tell, I loved the art style. Interestingly, uh, I don't know if it's a translation issue or, or what it was, but the story had a very uneven quality. There was almost like a start and stop and a bit of, of a gap in the storytelling. Um, and so there was something a little bit askew with, with that aspect of the book, which is why I couldn't rank it any higher than number five, even though I really, really, really loved um, Almangas, Al Al I think that's how you say it, Almangas, um, Alamangas, perhaps, uh, artistry and her style. I'm definitely going to seek out more of her books in order to see um, if she, if her style is really consistent and uh, what else she's produced out there. I just, I just love this. Okay, number four is The Farmer by Shimo Abadia. Shimo is a Spanish-based illustrator and I really, really love this book. This tells the story of all the work a farmer has to do in order for things to grow. And I was really in love with the color palette that is used in this book. I love things about nature in general. And then having this book dedicated to the person that nurtures the land, that puts all the work into getting things to grow was was an absolutely charming concept but i think what makes it number four is that there's this sense of humor in the illustrations that i loved and i love the playfulness of perspective and proportions that shimo uses throughout the entire book very very charming read I was going to say this earlier, but I'll put it in now, that I uh, all of these books are from the library except for this book that comes in at number three. And that is Monkey on the Run by Leo Timmers, who is a Belgium-based illustrator. 
This is a wordless picture book that is all about a little monkey sort of um, getting up to no good. And it is funny, which is which is one of the things I rank, I rank pretty high. I like people who have a sense of humor. And for a wordless picture book, this has a lot of humor in it. And it took me a minute to figure out. So um, ultimately, throughout the whole story, this train is really on the go or this that you have this sense of motion of cars going down the going down the road. And so every time you turn the page, the little monkey on the front is um, continuing to move along in traffic and get up to a sense of, of no good. But there are sort of uh, there is a storyline within a storyline and you really have to figure it out by looking really, really closely at the illustrations. And at first I thought it was just all about um, animals on a on, on the road or in motion. That's what I thought this picture book was about until I realized that we are following this same little troublesome monkey um, that is being mischievous and cute and funny and that there is a whole narrative arc throughout the story. And so I like that I was tricked a tiny bit. I like that there is humor in it and I thought that the illustrations were absolutely brilliant. Coming in at number two, we have Just Because, which is written by Mac Barnett and it's illustrated by Isabel Arzenault. Uh, Isabel, the illustrator, is a Canadian-based illustrator and Mac Barnett is um, a Californian. He's based here in the U.S. What I loved about this book is that it is about a child asking their parents questions at bedtime and it's the nonsensical questions that often parents don't have the answers to and what I love is that the parents answer the father's answer to the child is very creative like one of the questions is where do black holes come from and he go and he says that they are the mouths of dinosaurs <laughs> And then what I love is that uh, the illustrator uses this style to create a sense of absolute whimsy to the answers. And this picture book is quite large. And so you're almost like sucked into the illustrations that are strange and nonsensical and funny. And just like there's something that just pulls you in and makes you want to look um, even longer at each page. And I really, really love that. I also love that it was very relatable, both from the child's perspective and from the parent's perspective. So I can absolutely see and I have had my children ask me nonsensical questions. And often I take things very literally. And so I'll answer with a very literal answer like I don't know or, you know, black holes are and then I try to explain it. And instead, I like that there is this sort of playfulness to the answer um, and the the idea that you can loosen up as a parent, which is what I need to be reminded of. So yeah, this is number two. The number one book, y'all. My number one book is shocking to me because when I saw it, when I picked it up from the library, I didn't think it would be my number one book because the illustrations at first glance are quite lackluster. But as I read it, I thought it was utterly brilliant. It is doing something so unique and it is doing it incredibly well. And that is The Boring Book by Shinsuke Yashitake. Yashitake is a Japanese-based illustrator. Um, and what he is doing in this book is exploring the concept of boredom. And he's doing it from a bunch of different angles and at the level of a child, but without talking down to a child. And you start to get things like, I wonder if a bug is ever bored. And um, I wonder like, what is boredom? And it was incredible to see this illustrator take an abstract concept and think about it from a variety of angles. And condense it down to a picture book using illustrations to support the explanation of what boring is or what being bored is and just doing it so well. I walked away from this book almost in awe because I've seen other illustrators and writers do the same thing, try to explore a very abstract concept and often what you get is beautiful illustrations 
with a very nonsensical and scattered um, writing throughout. It's, it's difficult to explain an abstract concept to a child. But here, um, Yashitaki just did it so well. I read this with my child. He really loved it. And I just thought, I keep on thinking about this book. It's strange. I, I keep on thinking about this book. And that's what you want from all kinds of literature. And to see it done in a, a children's book and to see it done so well and to walk away from it being more in love with the illustrations than when I first started is a feat. It's an absolute feat. So this is my number one book um, uh, on this list of the New York Times and New York, what was it? The New York Times and the New York Public Library's um, best illustrated books of 2019. The Boring Book is at the very, very top of my list. Okay, well that's it from me. If you've made it this far, I would again encourage you to subscribe if you want more videos like this. If you want to hang out with me from time to time, I would love that. But otherwise, thank you for spending this time with me. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye guys.